Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we're just going to finalize and clean up this area. And in the following videos, we're going to move on to more exciting things. To start this process, I'm going to highlight row 1, A through M, and merge the cells. We'll give this report structure a header. So maybe we make the row size 40. And in this cell, I want there to be some dynamic text that represents what this report is about. And how we can set up dynamic text is we can use an equal sign. Instead of just typing in this, this cool report, which we have right here, now front and center, we can use an equal sign and do formulas. So let's try that. The first thing that I want to say is the team name. So we'll go equals, and remember, because these are dynamic, I'm not going to use these. To, I can't say equal mon stars, right? If I did that, that's fine. But if I change current team to be position, now my title is changing to be to have the position included. So that's just an example of the pros and cons. I just did Control-Z to undo that. It's the example of pros and cons for having dynamic profile data. And it's fine because we store all the profile data that we don't manipulate in this sheet here, so we can use that information. Now going back to the title, what I want this to say is I want it to say pretty much a monstars or the team report for the player that we select. And then I want it to say the camp that, that we selected so that I know everything up here is about, I don't have to, it's just right up, up front and center, who am I looking at for what team and for what camp. And then it's kind of easy from there. So to do that, instead of equals D9, because we know that's dynamic, we'll go equals, go to our chart data, and select the team from there, which is not impacted by our selections in the dashboard, aside from the athlete that we select. We do an ampersand, which separates uh, cells, cell locations in Google Sheets from text that you want to type in manually from other cell locations. And we'll see that in a second. So monstars quote space report for and then space and another quote so i'm integrating my own text with some variables that i have another ampersand the player name so so far we have the monstars report for that player and i'll do another ampersand because i want more custom text and i want to do a dash and then another ampersand for the session that we selected and one thing that I'm going to change here is notice how there's like some, all right, the monstars is in all uppercase, report for is, I'm just going to make everything uppercase. And there's a function in Google Sheets called upper that you can type in to do that for any cell. So before chart data A10, I'm going to do upper, open parenthesis, and I could do it for this entire thing. Close the parenthesis at the end and click enter. And there we go. So now it's all uppercase. We have the monstars report for whoever that is. And if we change uh, the person, now they're on a different team. So it's a tune squad report for whoever that person is and whatever we have selected. If we change the selection to this, now it's for in season for whatever we have picked here. So that's, that's great, right? Now I'm going to format this a little bit more. I'll make the background this dark gray and the font white, maybe make the size a little bit bigger, like 14. And notice that there are all these zeros here. In the last video, we did some custom formatting stuff, and I'm actually going to do it the same here. And we'll adjust um, the number of decimals and stuff again. But remember how we added arrows in the last video? And for how we wanted to format zeros, we just did a dash. We can do the same type of thing here. But I shouldn't have even mentioned arrows, but we can select all this data that we have here. Go to Format, Number, More Formats, Custom Number Format, and we can change it to be 0.0, semicolon, so that's how we format positive numbers as 0.0 for one decimal place. How we format negative numbers is 0.0, again, one decimal place. 
semicolon, and how we format zero numbers, we can just leave blank. And if we do that and click apply, now the zero numbers don't show up. And we'll probably want to adjust how we how all these are formatted. So again, so I shouldn't have done it before, but if we select training camp, yeah, so now that they're all one decimal, we'll just have to go back and say, no, these should be two. These should be two decimals. And maybe actually body weight should be no decimals. And maybe these, all of these should be no decimals also. And now let's see what happens if we go back to in season. Okay, our decimals are formatted the way that we want them to be. So we have that out of the way. Now there are two more things that I want to do. The first is just organizing these into fitness categories, or that's what I like to do, is I like to have a have these in fitness categories. So I'll merge these cells together. I'll call this fitness. I'll merge these two together and center it, call it speed. Merge these two together and call them power. And this is completely dependent on how many metrics you have, what you want to fit into each category, and this should be well defined. You shouldn't have to use these arrows really ever. Like you should have your KPIs and all these things well defined, but hopefully this makes it dynamic in case you add new KPIs or you decide to change, it's easier to change around. And we'll merge these together and we'll call this strength. And just bold all these things horizontal line, vertical line, and maybe I'll make the background this some sort of gray. And I'm just going to put box like some boxes around these, some some sort of gray color with a thickerish, thickerish like that's a word, like some uh, like a kind of thick border around them. And I'll put one around each, just so I can kind of see the the segregation of them. I might decide to change this. I'm I'm pretty finicky with with how I how I visualize things. Okay. The last thing that I want to do here is I want to start storing team logos. And you might have sport logos or class logos or whatever it might be. And we're going to do that in the admin area. Then we can use those logos in our visualizations, just like we use the player images. So let's add an area called team logos. Maybe I'll just copy what we have here for the formatting and we'll say team team name and logo to get the team names well there are a couple different things that you can do here you could get an automatically updating list of team names from your athlete profiles or from your database your testing database i don't advise that because if you add more teams or remove teams the sorting and the length of the list will change and then the logos aligned with each team will change also so just like actually in our test testing metric list, where if we were to add things in our database before 10 meter sprint, all these boxes would be offset and we'd have the wrong lowers better checks. So that's why we talked about adding metrics to the end or adding all your metrics and then doing this. Same thing is true for team names. Let's just type the ones in that we have. We have the Monstars. And we have the tune squad, which and they might be sports, um, depending on what you're doing here. And to add logos, we just do what we did by inserting images in cell in the first uh, couple videos. So let's go insert image, image in cell. And you'll either want to know the URL, the image that you want, or have it saved on Google Drive or on your PC or laptop. I'm going to go to browse. I know the image that I want. This is my Monstars logo here. And I'll get my Toon Squad logo next. Go to Insert, Image, Image in Cell. And I'll take that one for my Toon Squad one. And then I have another logo, and this is blank. So if there is no team, I still might want a logo, logo to show up. So I'll go to Insert, Image in Cell. And I'll just take this NBA logo for now. And if we go back to our testing dashboard, we can now choose where we want this logo to show up. So perhaps we extend this box down, down one maybe for now, and then move all this 
information up. And I might highlight all this stuff here. Merge and center, and then we'll do an equals index match. So equals index, and go to our admin. What do we want in that cell? We want the logo, comma. Now what row of the logo do we want to get? Well, we need to match, open parenthesis. Let's go to our chart data. We need to match the team that the player that we selected is on, comma. Two, we need to match that team to, if we go to our admin, the team name in our admin area to get the logo associated with that team. Little we'll comma zero, close the parentheses and click enter. And there we go. So here's our logo. And maybe I'll put it in the middle. I honestly I don't really know where to where to put this logo. Maybe I just want it like a small one. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking a little bit more about this now. Maybe we'll just go across here. So there, so we have a small, small logo there, and we can incorporate that wherever we want. And I think that's it for, for this video. We may, you may find that I, I move things around or change some things because I don't really like the way things look or feel, and that's normal as part of dashboard design as you continue to go through it. You may have, have a vision, and things might change based on how what you're doing pans out. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any thoughts about the layout of this or other things that you want to see, please leave a comment below and mention you know, what you're doing, what would be cool to add, what would be cool to see, and maybe even how you organize your categories. That would also be cool to know about. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will learn about named ranges.